Today I'm going to show off some pretty interesting snakes that uh, I don't think I've shown on the channel in a long time, and that is rough green snakes. Uh, I've got four baby rough green snakes here. Uh, I don't know a ton about them. These were sent to us by someone that couldn't keep them, and we can assume that they're from the same clutch. Because of that, I'd say they're most likely captive bred, but there is a potential that they were wild caught. I'm going to grab one of these guys. So I'm going to show you them uh, chowing down, talk about the species, whether they make good pets, and uh, my thoughts on them. So kind of a classic little reptile video that I haven't really done in a while. These are the tiniest snakes we've ever gotten in. Other than like, even baby corn snakes are not this small, and they don't get big ever. At most they get two to three feet. Uh, there are also smooth green snakes. As far as I know, they get about the same size, uh, but these are just a little bit rougher. They have a slightly different scale structure, and they are kind of intimidating to hold almost just because they're so small. Holding like a 10 to 15 foot snake is kind of like, oh, this is cool, this is interesting, but I wouldn't say intimidating. But holding something this tiny that can just scoot away, never to be seen again, is a lot more scary. Um, but with that said, they're not the best handling snakes in general. Uh, you, you probably want to go for a different species if you want one that you can constantly handle. There are an arboreal species and they're a lot more shy. And I think the most interesting part is they're insectivores. On top of that, they're one of the few snakes from the United States that are actually native here uh, that you can keep, uh, like that, or at least that are kept often. Corn snakes, milk snakes, king snakes, those are all very similar and they're all native here, but these are just a super different kind of snake. Uh, they would still be considered colubrids, I guess, but obviously it's not much like that family of corns, milks, and kings. But like I said, they are wild caught a lot, which means there's a high chance of them being uh, parasitic if they are wild caught, because parasites are everywhere. Uh, I talked about this in a recent video as well on bearded dragons, and all of these look really good. I would say this one just looks a little different. He's a bit darker, and he has basically just something weird happening with the scales on the side, and so we're keeping them all separate. And I'll go a little over how we're actually housing these. So if you're actually keeping one permanently, you would ideally want a big enclosure that they can enjoy. They're arboreal, meaning that they like to climb and uh, explore up high. And that's no surprise, because they're bright green. And they move in a really interesting way. It reminds me of how mantises move or other animals that just want to look like they're mimicking like a shaking leaf or something. Uh, at first I was like, wait, are they like spider wall pythons or something? But no, they're, they're not. They're not stupid, they're just clever, actually. I think the reason I find these exciting is because I grew up finding these uh, in North Carolina, and I, I haven't seen them in a while because I don't really go outside, but it's really cool to see them. And I have a really old video where <laughs> I caught one of these, and I tried to keep it, and it went terribly. And today we will be showing you um, a snake. Uh, it's a common um, green snake. Okay, and yeah. there he is. So I believe it's a girl. I'm not totally sure. We need names. So if you have any names, email in Sinichinis. Yeah. Well, that one never ate. Um, I tried to feed it crickets. Uh, I could never get it to eat, and I just re-released it. So good on you, baby Alex, for releasing the green snakes. But these actually eat, and uh, it's really interesting to watch. I will admit, I'm kind of bored of feeding snakes. Um, I don't even do it here. I outsource a lot of the work, and uh, <laughs> I've fed like two snakes in the past three months. Um, but these are actually interesting to watch. Uh, once I get tired of seeing rodents getting eaten, for one, you can actually feed them live live things and it doesn't hurt them. We're actually completely out of insects uh, because of a certain thing happening around the world. Uh, it looks like places haven't gotten as many shipments. So I had to feed them kind of large crickets today, but uh, this one was still able to get it down no problem. And it's super cool to watch. The way they eat is not very similar to other snakes. Like say a ball python, it's most likely going to wait for the food. The food comes by, it grabs it and it constricts. Or a corn snake might even kind of hunt for the food and follow it around. Uh, and once it grabs it, it'll constrict. Or say even a sandboa, a completely different snake. Um, they'll wait for it to come by, they ambush it, they grab it, and they pull it under the substrate. But green snakes just start chewing on it. They, they kind of follow it around, they get excited, they get it in their mouth and they don't, they don't constrict, they don't pull it under, under the ground. They just start gnawing away. And 
It looks kind of awful if you're the cricket, but gotta do what you gotta do. I'm impressed that this one's actually really comfortable right here. I think probably one of the benefits of them being arboreal is the fact that you can pretty much handle them and they are gonna be super strong. Honestly, I can't even feel him on my skin. He's so tiny. I just barely feel him on my index finger. Uh, I don't even know the sex. I'm just saying him because I'm sexist, I guess. Uh, it's a weird experience compared to holding other things. It's, it's similar to holding an insect where you can't actually feel them. But no, they're snakes. And of course, these are babies, so they get they get bigger. And they're super cheap. You can find them online. These will be for sale once we're sure that they're all healthy. And the most likely reason that I don't think they're parasitic is because they've been growing. When we got them, they were smaller than this, believe it or not. And the pictures that the person sent us before sending them, they were even smaller in those images. So a parasitic animal is very rarely going to grow, especially at a good rate like these are, because the parasites are gonna be taking away all that nutrients from what they're eating. But they're doing just fine. So I think that they'll check out. And the previous owner said they did wonderful. They just couldn't keep them for some personal reason, but I'm not complaining because they're, they're cute. Honestly, I personally would not keep on long-term, at least right now. Uh, I'm, I'm very satisfied with what I've got, but I think it's cool to have variety like this. Even if you can't handle them as much, it's just really cool to have. They seem more intelligent, kind of. They seem more aware than other animals. I have an older video called Ranking Animals Smartest to Dumbest or something, and uh, I think these would be pretty high on the list. Not as high as what I put on top of the list, was, which was an abronia in that video, uh, which is a type of little green lizard. Maybe just little green animals seem the seem the, um, the smartest to me. But also I'm small and my last name is Green, so maybe we're onto something. Uh, of course, the question people are gonna ask, is this a good beginner snake or a good beginner pet, beginner reptile, beginner anything? Um, I don't think that's a good way to think of reptiles. I think you could technically get an advanced animal and do wonderfully, even if it's your first one, but you're gonna have more difficulty. There's gonna be less room for error. There'll be a high likelihood of the animal dying if you make small mistakes. And I don't think there's a high likelihood of these dying if you started with them. I think really the main thing is just where you get them. Uh, if you get them from a place that gets them imported, if you get them from a local pet store, a pet chain, uh, most local pet stores get them from the exact same places that the big stores do. So there's a decent chance that they're gonna be wild caught. And not that that's bad necessarily, there's stuff that comes along with that, um, including those risks and dangers with the animal safety. Uh, that could also spread to your other animals if you're not careful. Oh, I forgot to talk about our enclosures. So yeah, like I said, they're gonna want decent sized enclosures that they can explore because they're not a species that just sits and waits. They're a species that moves around a lot. But because they're only here for a couple months and uh, we are terrified of them getting out, we've been using deli cups uh, that we actually ship them in. They're the only things we have with holes small enough that they can't get out of at this size. I would say an animal this size would probably appreciate a five to 10 gallon, but uh, for now, we, I took everything out of them. I took their little water bowls out and their hiding places and everything. And they are partially sitting on heat tape uh, when we have them downstairs. But for now, to keep them healthy and safe, we're just using the smallest thing that we have that can keep them contained, which is literally the things that we ship animals in. This is not a good example of what you should do long term. If there was something wrong with them and we ended up having to keep them longer, uh, I would move them out of these. But for a couple months, the minimal enrichment, I think, is worth taking away any risk of them getting out or losing track of them or whatever. Obviously, the color is probably one of the most interesting parts. Uh, I'd say like top five. Top five interesting things about rock green snakes. Uh, they're tiny. They eat insects. They're green and to, yeah. But I don't know. It's a cool color. What can I say? And their eyes are just massive. They're unnecessarily big compared to their head. I wonder what a bite from them would feel like. But uh, no reason to stretch this out. I've been doing a lot of very long videos that are between 20 and 40 minutes. So why not have a shorter one and keep it simple and brief? I just wanted to show off these rough green snakes we have. Uh, if you're interested in buying them, uh, they might already be sold by the time you're watching, but you can join the newsletter as always, link below to Emerald Scales. Um, and if you wanna see videos like this in early, uh, Patreon. I'm not doing good with my plugs today. Thankfully, they ate on camera. It took forever. I st sat here for 15 minutes trying to get them to eat. If you want to meet other new animals, check out Playlist. Woo, a playlist, wow. And uh, yeah, that's it. So I'm Alex, and thanks for watching.